Hi everyone, welcome to Cake Tastic Cakes. It's Jen. I'm going to show you today something a little different. It's going to be a pilot house boat made of gum paste. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe and hang on because this is a big one. Here we go. Okay. Start by rolling out the bottom base of your boat. And if you could see what I did right there, I was rolling it at an angle so that the one end is higher than the other because boats, the bottom um, is lower in the back and higher in the front, I guess, to cut through waves and things. So that's the effect I'm trying to go for here. I'm going to cut the sides nice and straight, but the lower end is going to be flat, nip it right off like that. And the front is going to be um, cut like an arrow. I just turned it upside down here and I'm not cutting straight down at an arrow. I'm cutting down and out. So when I turn this back over again, so it's right side up, the top of the front of the boat is going to be wider than the bottom of the front of the boat. Okay, so you can kind of imagine what I'm going for here because boats taper in and tuck down under themselves in the front. So that's the effect I'm going for here. And these little tidbits that are sticking out, just put them to the, nip them off, put them to the side, clean up your edges, it's fine, it's not a big deal. And I'm going to use my fondant smoother to smooth off all the edges, make it nice and rounded off and streamlined. And once you get it all done, you're going to have to put it aside and let it harden overnight. This is going to be the next layer of the, the pilot house. It's an enclosed one, so I'm just making all the walls and everything out of solid gum paste. If you want to make it lighter in weight, you could hollow it out. It's a bit of effort that I wasn't willing to put into it, so this is what I'm doing. Um, using the square just to mark it off so I have nice sharp edges and then I use my knife to cut. I want it to be tucked inside of the boat. I need it to, um, you know, not be right up to the edge. And the front is going to be pointed just to match the front of the, the bow of the ship, how it, how it goes into like a point. Yeah, there you go. So I'm going to cut straight down on this. I'm not going to angle it like I did before, but I am going to use my fondant spreader smooth it out, round it out, shape it out, make sure it all looks pretty, make sure it's nice and tucked in, that you have a little walk around area like boats have. And this is a little too tall. I do have to put another layer on top. So I'm taking, you know, a, a chunk out of the bottom. And then you have to reshape it because you mess it all up. And once you get it good, use a little bit of water, press it into place, and there you go. Okay, we're good. We got it. All right, make sure it's all lined up. Nice and smooth, nice and straight. Having straight edges is hard to do, but do your best, do the best you can. Okay, this is gonna be the top part of the pilot house. So we've got basically three levels to our boat and it's gonna be smaller than the middle layer. So the sides are gonna tuck in not as much as the bottom of the boat in the middle layer. So just like a little ledge is all you need to leave room for. Again, it's gonna be rectangle shaped. So it's gonna be long, it's gonna be thinner but we're not going to put a front point on this one. Um, we're going to make it angled down. You'll see in a second to have the windshield. See how I've cut down at an angle there, like that. And the back is, has to be lined up, but you can see the side that's showing here. It does tuck in a little bit, so that's good. Way too long, so I'm chopping it off. Make sure your, your size is good. Keep chopping and whittling until you get a, a proper size. And then when you have it in place and you have a good size, line it all up, press it all over, make sure you're nice and sharp. And then you're going to use your water just like before and seal it all together into place. All right. Now I'm going to put a solid back panel to get rid of all the seams and everything else. So that's what I'm doing here. I just use a square that's a little too big for the entire shape. And it turned out that it was like a good width, but not a right height or something like that. So just, you know, pull it, stretch it, shape it out. And you can see by my thumbs right there, I had to cut out a little bit of shape to it. So it's got like a one little step on either side. You see, I'm cleaning it up so that it goes to the edge of the boat on either side. And that just smooths it all out, gives it a nice kind of finished look. A little flat rectangle right in the middle for the cabin door. And then a little black square, nice and flat. Everything has to be nice and flat here, nice and thin. And a little black square there for the window. Um, the boat that I was making had a little window on either side. So again, two more little squares of black gum paste. 
cut them out, seal them with a little bit of water, stick them on either side of the door, make sure they're not too big that they don't stick out too far. I'm using my knife to just carve a little rectangle below the window on the door and to outline the door itself because the door and the picture had a little frame around it, you know. So that's all I'm doing here. I'm not actually creating another frame. I'm just using my knife to basically draw on the look that I'm going for here. And you will get to see it, I promise. <laughs> it was just hard to work with this angle. All right, there, you can kind of see it there in the, in the picture now. Okay, now we're doing more windows. This is going to go on either side of the top level of the pilot house. So it's going to go pretty much the whole length of the side. So it's again, rectangular shaped with a slant downward to go toward the front of the boat. And what you do on the one side, you gotta do to the other side. So once again, the rectangle with the slant down toward the front on the other side of the boat, just to follow the shape and the curve of that top cabin uh, roof <laughs> compartment. I don't know what you're gonna call it. And now we're gonna make the front window here. It's going to be pretty much a rectangular shape. It's gonna just taper out. See, I took a little, little bit of an angle to the front on either side. Just hold it up, measure it out, which is what I'm doing here, just getting the idea of where I want the window to end. Put a mark on it, then cut it out. A little bit of water seals everything in place. Uh, you do need to be careful with the black when you add water to it because it will turn the water cloudy black. And on white, if you smear it or if it moves or if it bleeds out, it will bleed that black onto your nice clean white and it's a huge pain in the butt. You can get it off with a little bit of water on your paintbrush, clean water, you know, and um, a paper towel to suck it up. But if you can avoid it, it's worth avoiding. All right, back to our windows. Two tiny little rectangles just to have uh, on the middle layer to show the cabin windows for the little cabin down below because apparently they have a little sleeping area in the front. And then we're going to outline all the windows. So this is gray, it's just a light gray color. Roll it out nice and thin, everything's nice and thin. Cut it out nice and thin and put a little bit of water around the edge of the windows and then just start lining it all up. Just take a big long stripe of it, press it onto place. It's gonna be you know, a little bit tricky because again, you can't have it too wet or your black will bleed. So do the best you can, press it all around. When it comes together, just pinch it off or cut it off with your X-Acto knife or knife, whatever blade you're using. And then just press against it on the edges to clean up your edges and make them a little sharper. And all of the windows have this. So the two on the middle layer and the three windows on the top layer are all gonna be outlined. So that's what I'm doing here, just outlining windows. And yeah, it was just great fun. And it's funny cause you know, everybody has things they like to make and things they really don't like to make. And for me, making vehicles is just, oh, it's just tedious and drudgery for me. So yeah, there's not a lot of passion involved in this one, unfortunately, but it does come out neat looking in the end. So totally worth it, right? Yeah, just keep telling yourself that. So like I said before, once you get it in place, make sure you press it with your knife, you know, make, get all those corners nice and as sharp as you can. And just keep on going. See right there was a little bit of a bleed, the black came out, so I just cleaned it up. And then you get to do the front window. Okay, you can see right there the gray of the front window, I just popped it in place. You don't need to keep watching me do it over and over again. Okay, this little skinny strip of white is going to be the little tiny hand railing that's on the sides of the bottom part of the cabin. Remember I said to leave that little lip showing there? This would be why along each side, just to the edge where it starts to bend inward. So be a go from the back corner right there where I just cut to the front where it starts to bow inward and then cut that off there. It's just this little, I guess it's a railing or something like that. So that's what that is right there. Now take your gray, roll it out nice and thin and basically make two little, you know, I don't know, jimmies out of it. Place them on top and now we got a couple of cleats and yeah, it's starting to look like a boat. There you go. See where we're going with this? Coming along. Okay, next step is 
our racing stripes because everybody knows boats have racing stripes, although I don't think they're called racing stripes. This boat in particular uh, had some black lines on it, so I'm just using my edible food coloring marker to hand draw them on. If you want, go right ahead and use your black gum paste and roll it out really skinny and then cut it out really skinny and then stick it on the sides if you like. Or you can get your markers and draw one on like I'm doing, but either way, I'm doing it now because I'm going to be adding stuff to the sides and it will be hard to access later. So that's why I'm doing that right now. Okay, now I'm going to put the top roof on. Well, make the top roof. We're not gonna put it on yet. It has to harden up, otherwise it'll be all saggy and droopy. I used a square cutter. I cheated on this one. I made it a little easier and just, you know, smoothed it out, smoothed off the edges, got the size right. Once the size was right, put it to the side and let it harden. Like I said, if you put it on now, the front and bottom will just sag and it won't look right. Okay, I am now taking a roll that I rolled out, oh, pretty thin, and I'm going to overlap the outside of the boat, the entire outside. You have to cut it at that angle don't forget, because the back is lower than the front, but you do want it higher than the bottom level. You want it to come up a little bit more because boats always have that kind of a wall, you know, that short wall that goes around them. So that's the effect that we're going for right here, and that's why I am doing this. I'm using the fondant spreader again to press it all tight against the sides of the boat. And if it doesn't stick somewhere, add a little water, make sure it holds in place because this is going to be important. And when you press it against the front, you're going to have to tuck it under, you know, because it does, see, I had to go in with my fingers and press it under. See how it's, because it really gets under in the front. It's going to overlap, so just cut it straight up the front. And again, your, your boat should be hard enough on the bottom level that it should be able to take that. Okay, don't forget to uh, make sure it overlaps everywhere, okay? So take more of the same thickness that you rolled out and do it for the other side. We'll come back to the backs, so don't worry about that part. But it's the same idea again. Hold it up, get your measurements out, match it up. That was a wonderful cut, just ignore that. And um, in the front, use your fondant spreader and just kind of rub them together and seal them together, okay? You see how I got kind of the wall going there? Now we come to the back. Just hold up a square, cut it out so it matches the sides, and use your water and then just kind of press it all into place. Make sure your edges are nice and clean, everybody. Clean edges are happy edges. I should put that on a t-shirt, but I won't because it's dumb. <laughs> all right, and now we have a boat that actually has a little lower deck area with a wall. Isn't that great? Yes, it is. It is great. And you can also see that I now have it on a paper towel. It was getting tedious to try to move it around, to slide it back and forth, to work on something, attach it. Uh, it's, it was just all starting to fall apart on me, so I stuck it on a paper towel for ease of transportation. Okay, and you saw I just tested out the roof to make sure it still looks good, it fits. And now we're going to put the uh, ledge on the boat. The wall has a ledge that goes all around it, or at least this one does. Whatever boat you're doing, just keep an eye on how, it, how it's styled. I just took, uh, you know, the same thickness as the walls that we just added and just cut out a long, thin rectangle. You know, it's not too skinny, but you'll see in a second where I'm going with this. But it has to be long enough that in one piece it goes down the entire side of the boat, so don't make it short. Okay, add your water on top and then place it on your boat. Um, watch how you do it. The inside edge of the of the um, ledge should match the inside edge of your wall. So you have, you know, you in theory would have room to walk around on the inside of the boat without it being in the way. And once you get that all into place, you're going to need to make sure you have, you know, a pretty decent amount of water on there because it will, the weight will try to make it just fall off the outer edge the way it's positioned because it's not centered. So anyway, uh, once you get it in place, then do the same thing to the other side. You can see in the front it overlaps a little bit. That's fine. We're just going to cut a straight cut straight out from the front. So now it's at an angle, you see? And we're going to do the same thing here. Uh, match it up to the edge of the wall with the edge of the rail or ledge that you're putting on there. And when it curves around in the front, 
have it match up to the cut that you already made and just cut it at a diagonal. You can kind of see through my arm there. There you go. Now you can see for realsies. And then pinch them together. See how it comes together? And again, you know, the back overlaps a little, no big deal. Trim it off. Make sure your edge is, you know, smoothed and nice and neat. And there you go. All right. And the roof is still coming on and off. Yeah, it's hard enough now that it can stay on and we need it on anyway. Okay, more of the gray, more little cleats. We're gonna put on one on each corner of the outside of the cabin. There was the one side, there's the other side. Pat, pat it into place, there you go. Now our boat won't fall away or sail away. Uh, it's just a little handle on the outside of the cabin on the one side. Put a little latch because our door needs to be able to open on the other side. And then I don't know what this was. I couldn't tell in the picture. Basically, it looked like a little, I don't know, compartment, cabby, cabby, geez, cubby is what I meant to say there. Who knows? Maybe it's like a cup holder or something. I don't know. But there was something there, so I stuck it on there. It was just a, basically a little rectangle that I, I pressed into place here. Now we're going to do the railing that goes on top of the ledge. Um, it doesn't go all the way down or around, so be careful. Well, on my boat, again, so have it line up wherever it goes onto yours. But there's always that golden handrail thing on the front. Geez, golden silver handrail thing on the front. So that's what we're making right here. Just roll it out nice and thin. Try to have it all the same thickness as best you can. And then flop it on there. Doesn't that look great? <laughs> it will in a moment, I promise. So yes, follow the shape of the ledge. It should be centered. And if you have like a silver edible paint or even maybe a silver, um, like a pearl, you know, something you could dust on, you could do that if you want. I didn't because I wasn't getting paid that much to make this thing. So I unfortunately did cut a little corners on the cost here and there. Because if you people have bought that silver shimmer stuff, you know it ain't cheap. Okay, so line up your railing nice and centered, like I said. And for me, the railing ended just kind of at the edge of the cab. So that's why I'm trimming it off right there on either side. And trimming it off on the other side very carefully, so meticulously. There we go. Okay, good. Now I am rolling out some thicker pieces of white, a big long white cylinder thing, and I'm going to cut out, I think they were five or six of these guys. These are going to go on the roof of the cab right outside the door, above the door. That's where you stick your um, fishing poles when you're cruising along, so they're up and out of the way. And that's what I'm doing here. The ones that I had in my picture, they were taller in the center and then kind of staggered lower as you got further out. So you're gonna see the two in the center are taller and they get a little lower as they go out. I guess it was five, I don't remember. It's been a while, guys, sorry. So that's what I'm doing. I'm standing them upright all in a row, right on the edge. They all touched each other. And again, follow whatever your boat looks like. If they have them up there, put them up there. If you want to get fancy, you could, you know, take some sticks of dried spaghetti and use some food coloring and paint them brown or black, whatever. Stick them in there to make it look like the poles of fishing poles sticking out. You know, there are ways you can, you can fancy it up with a little more detail if you wanted to. All right, so they are now in place. And now we're going to do the back ledge. And I guess you could have done it late, earlier, you know, it doesn't really matter. But it's the same as before, it just tucks in. But this time it overlaps on the inside of the boat, not the outside of the boat, okay? So that's just one little difference to pay attention to. All right, so, so far we got a nice little boat going here, don't we? Yes, we do. Why, thank you. <laughs> okay, and the next step we're going to be addressing is some more racing stripes. This is a navy blue color. Um, again, if you have a marker and you want to do it, go right ahead. I went, I went ahead and used gum paste for the outside stripe because it was thick. It was pretty thick and pretty dark. And my hand is just not steady enough to have a nice even line go around the entire length of the outside of the boat. 
I was okay with a little bit on the black on the inside, but this was this was too much for the <laughs> for my comfort zone here. So I painted some water around the whole edge. It was just a little bit down from beneath the ledge on the outside of the boat, so it's really hard to see, but it is there, I promise you. And I just stopped it at the front, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Just keep on going. If you're clever enough, you know, you can just keep going in one solid piece and not do two sections like I did. But there, you know, you can see it. And honestly, it's a lot cleaner than the one I drew on. So maybe you should consider doing it in gum paste for all the stripes. All right. Now this is going to be the platform. Um, I don't know, a little decking that goes on the back of the boat that's down beneath. It's kind of at the water level. It's also going to be where the engine will sit. So for this, you can see what I did. I rolled it out kind of thin, you know, about the thickness of our ledges there, and made a rectangle out of it. And I'm using one of my um, paint stirring sticks that I got. They're awesome for guides for rolling things the same thickness. And I'm just going to go halfway in it and just press it down a little bit. I wanted it to basically make a ledge so that it, it was a step, kind of, you know. And since I did press down on it, I smushed it out. So I got to trim the edges to make them all the same length again. So it's not smooshy. And I'm painting the lower end that I smushed and that's going to be tucked underneath the boat. You see how I did that there? Just to connect it so that the ledge was not free floating. Because when you try to connect things that's on a skinny little edge like that, it oftentimes doesn't work. And especially since it's going to have a motor sitting on it, I really needed to have it connected a, a bit stronger than it otherwise would have been. So I want to get into place, press it up, watch your edges, nice and sharp. La-di-da. Okay, we're going to start adding a little bit of details to the boat now. These, I guess, are drains, I guess, pump drains. I don't know what they are. They're just a couple little black spots so that I, little openings on the sides. There's two on each side. Just two little balls of gum paste, press them into place. I'm going to be putting another cleat on either side of the ledge up top. It just sits a little bit past the edge of the railing. One on each side, like I said. Um, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't know. We might have more cleats. It's been a while since I did this. Sorry. Okay, so now we've got the holes on the top. I'm assuming that if you know memory serves, these are where your fishing poles can also be held in place. So again, you got two on either side in black. Um, there was a little dot, gray thing, something like that right there. I'm guessing that's the drain for the deck, if you had to, you know, hose off your deck. The engine is going to be black. Uh, I took a black ball and kind of smushed it down so it was flat on the bottom. And then I'm going to trim three sides off and leave that last side still curved around, kind of, as you can see there. Just so that it snugs up against the back of the boat, but it curves down and into the water. Just so I had the idea of it. The red is just going to be a stripe on either side of the engine. I don't know what kind of engine it was. It was just black with a red stripe, so that's what I did. I just tried to copy it as much as I could with, as, with the photos I was sent and worked with. So there you go. Now you got an engine on it. And again, using the edible coloring markers, I was writing the name Parker on it because I think I mentioned it's a Parker's boat. There was some kind of a red decal on it, so I was just kind of putting something there. These are the personalized um, logos. It says Pop Stream. So they wanted one on either side of the boat and one on the back. So I made three of those and just stuck them on with some gum paste or some water. And that's it. It's all done. So hopefully you liked it. You'll like and subscribe. Check out my other videos, and I'll catch you all next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.